Hello, uh, my name is Matt Scott. I'm 17, soon to be 18, and I am a photographer. I'm currently studying at Amersham and Wickham College on the BTEC 90 credit diploma in image and vision uh, photography. And in September, I'm off to Southampton Solent to study a degree in photography. So I'm about to just go out to a shoot and this is mostly what I would take if I wanted to shoot. Most of my gear uh, is film based, film cameras, I do have a digital and my gear fluctuates between what shoot I have depending if I want to borrow stuff from college which can either be Hasselblad or Mimir 6.7 which are both medium format cameras. I do have my own medium format camera but my 35mm is probably what I mostly shoot. So we'll start off with that. So the newest 35mm camera which I have, which I was giving, given by the customer at work, um, is an Olympus OM-10. Uh, he was an ex-sports photographer and everything that he gave me, which was the camera and three other lenses were in mint condition. And it's an amazing camera. Talking about those lenses, I've got a 28 to 70 lens so it's kind of like an all-in-built one something like you know the equivalent today would be like a canon 24 to 70 or something like that um, it is isn't fixed aperture but that doesn't really bother me because when you're shooting skateboarding or something like that a lot of it differs between aperture ranges next one with a dodgy lens cap is the 50mm 1.8 very 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 sharp it's going to be great for portraits and just if I want to use just singular lenses and not have to worry about zooming in I use myself as a zoom that would be very very useful and for the time being my medium format which has got uh, some film in it at the moment so I can't show you the back but this is a twin lens reflex so if you might have known a more famous version of this it's called a Royley flex or this is kind of like a few models down but it still does the, the the job right and you've got all your focus panels light meter built in and this actually used to be my father's but he didn't really like medium format because he's weird and I love medium format and I love film so this thing is also very very good to shoot skateboarding on getting on to the film I'll be shooting which is Rolly black and white retro ISO 80 36 exposure really low speed black and white but it's really really contrasty no green at all because of its speed and I just love it really inexpensive as well it cost me like £2.50 a roll and then getting on to the film which is uh, medium format so this is for my Yashica uh, Portra 160 colour low speed again no grain really very good for skin tones and natural colours and I've also got a roll of HP5 black and white Ilford uh, faster speed a little bit of grain, but we like it to look a little bit more urban. First rain. <laughs> <laughs> sunglasses how I got into skateboard photography was of course through skateboarding um, I started about I started skateboarding about four years ago five years ago and then been doing actual skate photography for about a year honestly um, and I started from my mate Josh who got me into skateboarding huh? Yeah, and I'm then for looking into sort of the research yeah, of like photography, so skate photography, sorry, so yeah, we've got go Grant Britton and nowadays you have a Tiba Jefferson and a few other guys. It's something which I've it's always wanted to do, works. so I do it in my own style. Of course, I don't have all the high expensive yeah, cameras and flash kits and all that, so I just use to what I have to create what I can take. Famous photojournalist, war photojournalist, shot stuff to do with the South African rebels. 
That was a bit of a struggle. Anyway, he was the one that invented the, uh, the shoot a blank one. Because when they were uh, shooting all the rebels and all the fights and all like the stuff going on, you can never remember what shot you, like, you take at certain moments. They used to shoot blank, and then when they used to get in the dark, when they'd be like, oh, that was a shot I won as a front cover. Oh, the old good old days. I had to do that so I make sure my shutter isn't like cocked. That's it, that's the finished project. <laughs> So what I'm doing here is I'm photographing these keys here because there really is lots of them and it looks really kind of interesting to photograph. Now I didn't bring a cable release so I'm going to have to use the self timer so I don't get camera shape because the light in here is not fantastic. Um, I basically need the shutter open for longer so focusing is pretty good. Self timer, check my exposure, f11 at 1. Yep, and then just let it do its magic. Got a nice little ring to it, isn't it? <laughs> Don't even touch it. There you go. Oh, mate, this is the bit which is really difficult to tell if it's in focus or not. Yeah. Looks good. And I might do one when that shot would be like. The reason why I chose to shoot black and white is when I first started taking pictures on film, all I shot was black and white. And I feel like oh, on a personal level, black and white is something I understand more than colour. Um, and as well, black and white can tell the viewer of the photograph and can visualise maybe their own colours and have their own stories of the image. So that's what I want to have. I want to have the actual image itself, but a deeper meaning for each different viewer of the image. So that's why I've shot this project in black and white. Take another one on the side. Uh, the reason why I wanted to do this project was the ballroom is something you don't come across often and um, seeing something change through pictures is something I'm quite passionate about and seeing old pictures of this place and then what has happened to it is something that I really wanted to capture and I have done. Looking back on the project there would have been a couple of things which I would say have gone successful and gone unsuccessful. Uh, for, firstly successful, um, most of the photos which I wanted to get interior wise and actually skateboarding wise for action have come out really nice. There's a few I'd like to reshoot. Um, apart from that, the final images have come out, I, I'm very very happy with them. If I had to change a few things it would firstly be I wish I got some better portraits and as well my final images I wish I did them by hand, actually dark from print and you can't get everything. For this uh, project, I wanted to go back to basics very early on to my photographic sort of career. Um, I started off shooting black and white film and for this final project, I wanted to shoot black and white film. So I've gone back to sort of very original film, very, very good at what it does, uh, Ilford HP5 400. But for this project, I'm not shooting it at 400, I'll be shooting it at higher speed. So. That means uh, pushing the film, which is basically pushing the film to, li to its limits so you get more out of it. And I'll be shooting this project on my Olympus. 
EM10 with its 50mm 1.8. Reason being why it's a very, very good camera for what I need it to be. Very small, very compact, very, very sharp. And as well, it has the facilities to push film up to 16, ISO 1600 and more. The reason why I shoot a film, which is either 35mm or 120, which is medium format, is because I prefer the process of film. I like the long wait. And as well, a film is either cut down to 24 exposure or 36 exposure. So that's how many images you get on a roll. Um, so you can't just snap away all the time. It actually slows you down and makes you think about the photographs that you're taking. Um, and as well, as I said this before, you don't just take an image when you're making, when you shoot a film, you make an image. So that takes in developing it, hand printing it, scanning it in, and actually looking after the negatives afterwards and doing more with them. I find with digital, you can just snap away and then look and you get a review and it doesn't always slow down and the photography quality doesn't always look as good.